she went from plain to platinum. She brought glamour back to the runway. She's elegant, yet casual, sophisticated, and silly. She's an ever-changing chameleon at work and play. Meet the Blonde Angel, Nadja Auerman, next on Model. From Versace to Valentino, Lagerfeld to Dior, the key to Nadja Auerman's success is in her changing style. It's that unique quality that you can't really put your finger on. Almost intimidating, but at the same time, there's something soft. It can be of many, many, many different girls. She has captured the campaigns of Armani, Versace, Yope, Fendi, Shiseido, and Dana Buckman. She has motivated the greatest photographers of our time. You see so many things, and then you're very inspired by, by people like, uh, like models like Nadia. She's proud of her heritage. You can hear from her accent that I'm German. Yet a woman of the world. This is really uh, a nice way to get actually very universal. In the next half hour, get to know this multifaceted woman of fashion. Chocolate. From a royal affair to life on the Riviera. The many faces of Nadja Auerman. I'm able to, to be different characters, different women. I was born in Berlin. From the very start, Nadia challenged her cultural expectations. In Germany, you're just educated to be quite shy and, and not really stand up and say anything in front of people. But wanted to be like an artist in, in a circus and perform in a circus. So I, I think it was always about being an entertainer. I think it's, if, if you want to, to be in the spotlight, I think you will find a way to get there. But as a child, Nadia's desire to entertain was put on hold. I had kidney problems when I was little, so I, I had to get operated as I was four, six, and nine. It was actually very critical that I could have nearly died. This fight for her life helped build her inner strength. I realized that life really is a gift and that you really should try to enjoy every day in your life and, and also take, take the chances that you get because you might just get them once, you know? Being different from her peers also helped Nadia grow stronger. Boys are like, no, no, I don't want to be with her or I don't want to play with her because she's taller than me. And the girls, they're like, uh, yeah, they can't connect to you either. So in a way, you're an outsider. They called me a different name, Stork, yeah, for example, because I have very long legs. Nadia's sister encouraged her to see how being different could be an opportunity. She said to me, Nadia, I mean, come on, get real. You're so pretty, you're much prettier than most of the girls. You're taller, you're, we can already tell now that you're going to be very attractive. And I think it's just jealousy. And you should become a photo model. And that's exactly what happened. I got uh, discovered by a, a scout. It's like the typical story that each model tells probably, but it is true. I think in a way it is destiny, you know. And she saw me in a cafe and, and asked me if I don't want to become a model. And I said, oh, yes, sure, why not? After finishing high school, Nadia headed for Paris. The first week I got there at like 10 castings a day. I lived uh, in the metro, <laughs> as we can say. It was really like uh, from 8 o'clock in the morning uh, until like 10 or something on the run to see uh, photographers, designers, to introduce myself to people. From the beginning, Nadia was determined to succeed. I think if you, if you give a lot in the beginning, then at the end, it pays off. As a model, you have to work hard as well. You have to be disciplined. You have to be on time, I think, and you, you have to work hard to get successful. I started to work with Ellen Van Unworth, which definitely it was like probably my biggest breakthrough. But I mean, for me, my first cover definitely, which was a glamour cover, counted a lot. 
In Paris, Nadia met a designer who helped her early career and continues to be a mentor. I got to know Karl Lagerfeld. I adore her. I think she's a great person, a great woman, a great personality. And he helped me a lot. He was like, uh, like kind of a father nearly to me. Professionally, Lagerfeld's input was invaluable. He probably talked very good about me to a lot of magazines. He also used me for all his shows. Like as soon as he got to know me, um, I did Carl Lagerfeld, I did Chloe, I did uh, Chanel. Their relationship blossomed into a lasting and loyal friendship. I really feel close to him. Her appearance in George Michael's Too Funky video with other top models helped further her career. To set herself apart, Nadia came up with an idea. A unique modeling style. The Bal de la Rose. And life in Monaco. When I come home uh, to Monaco, it's, it's like I'm recharging my batteries. Nadia Auerman, next on Model. She's the girl from Berlin who was determined to succeed. Loyal friendships helped her flourish, but her chameleon style would inspire the world of fashion. We got into the platinum, which was a huge success. By the mid-90s, Nadia Auermann was getting noticed as one of the new faces of fashion, but then she had an idea that would set her apart. It was like during the, the, um, the grunge period and I had this blonde, normal kind of dark blonde hair. So I felt, well, ooh, it's always the same. So if, if they don't come up with another idea, maybe I should try to, to look different so they, they get inspired or something. After I bleached my hair platinum blonde, everybody recognized me like in the streets and then I couldn't go to Baker anymore to get some croissants. It was a new and glamorous look. Soon, every top designer wanted her. I did all the biggest campaigns, Versace, Valentino, uh, Ferret, uh, I can't name them all. With her new look came a new image. After I got platinum um, blonde, they started to call me Blonde Angel, since I was from Berlin, and uh, Marlene Dietrich, uh, they, they started to see a connection between me and Marlene Dietrich, because we have the same kind of um, Aura. Since she did this incredible movie, Blue Angel, they called me the Blonde Angel. I love when I work, for example, with Ellen von Umworth. We did a uh, Marlene Dietrich thing, and she told me, oh yeah, the story, there's a guy, and you're in love with him, and you know, and, and it's so much more fun when you have like an idea in the back of your head. Nadia's new look took her career to a new level. It was just to decide to get another look, you know. At that time, I was also into changing, to be flexible, like a chameleon, you know, to be able to, to, to be a different person also. This was the beginning of her signature chameleon style. You have to do something also to, to not make people get tired of you. So then I cut my hair, and then I, I changed into darker, and I cut it really short. The fashion world embraced her many looks, but something else made her stand out. She has the longest legs in history of modeling, I think. Yes, my legs are certainly very long. It's like one of the most important parts of my body. You know, in, in Germany, I don't think that people are really like uh, so into legs, but French people, for example, they really love legs, which I think is cool, <laughs> since they've got some good ones. And uh, yeah, it helped me a lot. Nadia's legs took her far on the runway, but it was her personality that gave her depth in photos. She can express things really, really incredibly strong. When feeling, she can just express feelings. It's like more acting than doing stills in a way. The idea of being a model was also to be a different character on, in every uh, session I'm doing. Nadia's ability to change made her a muse for top photographers. We were inspired by, by people like, like, like models like Nadia. I'm very lucky that I worked with the biggest photographers of all time. And Richard Avedon for me was like one of uh, my biggest heroes in, in photography. 
Yeah, exactly. That's Stephen Meinzel for American Vogue. This was a shooting about all the different new uh, directions of, of fashion. This is Mondino. I love that he showed also a sensuality about me that a lot of people haven't really shown before. Nadia especially enjoys working with fellow countrymen. I got introduced to Peter Lindbergh already like quite in the beginning of my career. We do have a lot of fun together. I mean, he's such a, such a great guy and he's so funny. And also, we, we speak German, so... That's, sometimes it's very difficult probably to, to understand each other when you don't, don't speak the same language. He's just talking something about Berlin, about the childhood, how beautiful the trees are, how much she likes birds, things like that. It just comes in her mind and then she controls completely her expression. Nadia's changing style made her one of the most sought after models of the 90s. From the campaigns of Dana Buckman to Armani, Shiseido, Yope, and Fendi. Coming up, the divas of the decade. Working with old friends. At home in Monaco. Nadia Auerman, next on Model. She struck gold when she went platinum. She's one of the most photographed women in the world. Her changing style personifies the spirit of the 90s. The Bal de la Rose celebrates the 50-year reign of Monaco's Prince Rainier. Renowned designer and Monegaskan citizen Karl Lagerfeld designed the event. I took five decades, 50, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and famous singer from the period with an idea of the fashion of the period. For the event, Lagerfeld chose the top models of our time. Each girl basically represents a decade from all the 50 years that Prince Rainier has been reigning. And um, this was for the 60s. Well, the 70s, I was about 10 years old, so um, I don't remember that much. Yeah, I'm 50s. 50. Yeah. Yes, of course. I'm more of an 80s chick myself. <laughs> for Lagerfeld, the model who most represents the 90s is Nadia. Because she's a very modern woman, and then she has this kind of intellectual, conceptual fashion look, which was in in the 90s. It's nice to be in the 90s. It's also a period where I was um, starting to model, and so that's nice. <laughs> During rehearsal, Nadia's focused working style is evident. 